Welcome. Today we're going to take a look at what Markdown is so that you can have a better handle on it. Uh, if you're looking, if you're following this because you're with Obsidian, then, or if you're not even with Obsidian, this is going to be Markdown to start with. Um, just plain Markdown, nothing fancy about it. Pretty much everything will support the beginning of this video. Obsidian has a few things that are just for itself, which I will say, hey, this is Obsidian now, and maybe you don't want to watch that stuff. Um, but the slides specifically are supported in lots of spots, so you may actually want to see that. Anyways, buckle up. So first off, what is Markdown? So HTML, if I wanted to make a heading, this would be a heading. And if I wanted to do a link, this would be a link. All right, this is actually not that readable. And so where Markdown comes in is it lets you go heading. And we can do a link like this. It's a lot more readable. One of the other great things about Markdown compared to say something like Pages or other WYSIWYG editors, which is what you see is what you get, is that it lets you focus specifically on the content and just describing what the content is. So it's a heading, it's a link, it's a block quote, instead of saying, hey, is it a pretty block quote? Because Markdown can be transformed by lots of different stuff into whatever you want. Now, basic formats of Markdown. Pound symbol is kind of the basic for your heading. Heading, right, we can do heading two. Heading three, this is a hierarchy we can do all the way down to one, two, three, four, five, six. Heading six, if you want. Right, and there is you know four and five as well. So that's how we do a headings in Obsidian. You can actually also go like content, and you can even fold your writing content. You can fold everything under a heading, right? If I did a heading one again. Um, I would fold and just see my next heading. So this can be a good way to like work on chunks of a document if you want that. Um, and some other places do folding, but that depends. In Obsidian, you do have to turn that on in uh, the actual settings of the application to get folding. Next up is lists. So a bulleted list is list, 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 right? This is a bulleted list. Lots of applications will also support it this way, list. List, list, Obsidian does as well, but if you start with it, it wants to move into what we're gonna talk about next, which is, this is emphasis, emphasis. All right, emphasis actually works two ways, with the single star or a single underscore, emphasis, both, and then you can also do bold, right? bold, or bold. Other lists you can do are number lists, you can go, right? Number, number, number. It will not, though, at least not every application will actually insert. It would actually give you like um, or kind of increment the fourth number. It may not do that for everything, um, although lots of them still would render it properly on the other side. Some applications you can go like this. Right, dot number. Let's see if Obsidian does this. One dot, and it does. So you can see over here it says one, two, and over here it's just one, one. This is just a numbered list. And if I wanted to indent, I can actually just go like this and do like a list like that. All right, you can indent multiple times and change your style of list, not a big deal. Something Obsidian doesn't uh, support is strike through, but lots of other places do that, and you could still signify it like this, and it's not gonna make a big difference. Strike through is a tilde and a tilde. See, it doesn't render here, but that can still mean strike through. The nice thing about this is it's simply plain text, right? Obsidian is simply what's called a markdown file. A little bit operating on this file right here. Markdown, if I change it to .text at the end, it's simply a text file. There's nothing fancy about it except for text. It's also a reason why markdown is excellent. There's no like fancy stuff to do with it. You just get to use the file. Links. So a link is the title of the link, and then a round bracket, the URL. So 
right title of the link and the URL and that would take me out to wherever I want to go and if you really want to you can even do mail to and it's a mail to link now so this will actually open up your email client of choice next up is code blocks so there's a few things you could do if you just are looking at it if I was going to say name a function for nerd reasons because I'm a nerd I would say let's say get post meta and that would be uh, a code block or a fenced code but you can also go php and we'll go function something foo return bool bar and you see over here it is highlighted properly again lots of markdown uh, supports that but if it doesn't support it you'll just get something like this like just a plain text right if I didn't want to to get the syntax highlighting that's what you'd get in lots of spots anyways but if I do PHP or JavaScript or any of the other languages that obsidian supports I will get like something that looks formatted nicely which is cool images now technically a markdown image is just like a link right image this is your url to the image right here right so you go uh mikhail.ca slash assets slash image.jpg and there's nothing there uh, except you put this at the beginning and now it's an image obsidian doesn't support this uh, that's not how they do it. They do a non-standard link to an image. So let's just grab an image. I probably got something on my desktop that will be acceptable. There you go. So if I just drag and drop this, it does a double. This is a transclusion officially. So this is a wiki link to a specific file in my folder. And if I looked over here, then I've also got this file right here, right there. And it's named one because I probably have it from earlier demoing it to myself. I do. So that's how it does it. Um, but in plain old Markdown, uh, it is not like this. So you can look up the Markdown image links uh, if you want that for, like I said, for Obsidian. You can just drag and drop the image in and it'll work great. And you can link to any file. Actually, you can link to like a PDF uh, as well in Obsidian and in this format and it'll work just fine. Next up block quote so this is for any type of block quote you want to do just to say that this is a quote from something it's not like ignore you don't even need to worry about what the style is but that's what it will look like in obsidian in like any other markdown it'll just look something different but it's just to say hey this is a quote from something else tables tables are a little tricky actually like this is going to be a table, so you'll see how it's a little tricky. Something pipe else pipe. Not going to go pipe dash 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 pipe dash 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 pipe. Right now I go foo bar, and now I have a table over here. Right, if I want to add something else to it again, I do that, and then I have to go dash dash dash, and now I have my thing again. Nope. So tables can be tricky. There are lots of online table generators. If you say, oh, I want it to be X number of cells wide and this many tall, pretty easy. I often start there, to be honest. <laughs> I just go and find one that's the right size. Um, you can even go, if you want it to like match up, you could just space it out. You just need the three dashes, right? You can space it out again to make it look right. But then you often find, you get into something like, let's open up this one, books on race. Right, this one here, like I could keep it all lined up, but that would just turn into a pain in the butt. So I don't. I don't, and I just look at it in a previewed view most of the time. Now, if you need to show something like your starred character, you can escape them. Not bold. Right, and now I'm just showing it as opposed to saying not, well, not bold, not emphasis. Not bold anyways, but not emphasis. Um, right, if I wanted to do doubles, to actually make it not bold, I would do doubles, and it's still not bold, right? Mm 
Now this really is bold. And the bottom one's bold and the top one's not bold. I like to escape both characters as well. Remember that, we've got to escape both if I want to show both. Perfect. So if there's any characters that are like regular markdown characters that you don't want to show, then you can just escape them like that with a backslash. Slides. So this one's cool. And this one is supported by Obsidian, not supported by everything else, but definitely supported by Obsidian. Again, three dashes, slide, three dashes, slide, three dashes, right? Slide. So then you can even say like this, and you could put in block quote. You have to turn this on in Obsidian as well. Under the plugins, there is a slides, slides right there. You gotta turn that on. Uh, it's not on by default. And that actually lets you go over here and say, start presentation. And now I can just use the arrow keys and switch between my slides, right? Um, so if you want to do presentations, there's a bunch of a bunch of applications out there that lets you take like a markdown presentation setup. You could include, I think you can even include images in here. Let me try that. Let's just grab this one that I've used a couple times. And start presentation. No, it's not including images. So that is not something you can do. Um, in this, lots of other places will allow you to include images uh, in your slides if you want that. Now, from here on out, we're going to talk about stuff that's like really it's Wikilink style and transclusion style. This is not for other applications, though, necessarily. So we can do stuff like this. Let's go to free range kids. So this free range kids is linking and this would show up in my graph view to these two notes are linked. Another thing we can do here is we can hit this right I have the pound key and I can link to a different heading inside that note here. Let's actually open it right here for you so you can see free range kids. You can see I have different uh, notes or chunks in here and I can go like this and I could link to summary and it'll autocomplete. Then I can even go Pipe, and I should be able to title it, right? Title, or does it not? It doesn't look like it titles with that. Does it title this way? Title. Oh, I'm not in preview mode, that's why. Preview, that does title like that. And does it do it if I do summary title? Let's go pipe. Summary, perfect. Can I do? Title, I can. So that's another way to do it. If you want to look at it in preview mode, right, you could be writing and I want to link to the summary, but it just doesn't make sense. Like as you write it linguistically, then you'd do the pipe and do the title. Another thing you can do here, let's do this from here. So I can also go um, exclamation, oh, double square unwatched tragedy, and it will actually embed the or transclude the um, file right in here and you can do that to headings as well so i could go free range kids and i could put in right i can just hit that right now and i could do summary and now it's just going to include the summary which has nothing under it so i could say instead key ideas now you can see I have the key ideas heading up till it gets to the next heading. And so I'll use this if you see in free range kids, let's, uh, I think I can link these panes, a cool one, link pane. And now if I change this over here to free range kids, you can actually look through the note and see that I've included the quotes. I've actually transcluded them right inside the note so that I can see what I'm talking about as I go. And that's really it. So just a quick or short note on what Markdown is and some of the extra stuff that Obsidian has for you to use so that you can mark up your notes. Don't worry about what they're supposed to look like. Just describe the content and let Markdown take care of it. If you need to like get into PDF, there's lots of stuff online that will like let you export to PDF. You can use 
uh, stuff like even IA Writer, which I have off to the side for my notes, right? Let's see if I went into Introduction to Markdown for Obsidian. That's what I'm looking at on my iPad. But I can even go to Export, and this is just a Markdown file. And I can go to Export, and I can export it into lots of different formats, right? HTML, PDF, Word, Project Archive, which is kind of their fancy thing. Um, so Markdown lets you do lots of different stuff with it. Ulysses will read this as well, which is another Mac application, which lets you stick it in lots of different formats as well. EPUB as well, so you can actually publish a book out of Markdown with that. And Markdown gives you lots of control. So it's excellent. I think it's worth learning for lots of people. If you're going to do a lot of writing, Markdown is totally worth it. If you liked the video, you can give me a thumbs up below. If you loved it, you can subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and that way YouTube will let you know what's coming up. But make sure your device notifications are off because you got better things to do, like go read a book, hang with your kids. And if you really loved it, you can go to patreon.com slash Curtis McHale and uh, support the channel. Have an excellent day.